This is a DIY custom Pioneer VU meter from a Pioneer CT-F900 cassette deck. There is the the CTF 950 and CTF 1000 that should have the same VU meter. But before I explain anything, this VU meter um, was inspired because I, when I was a kid I was a garbage picker. I would ride around the neighborhoods on my bicycle and see what's in the garbage. And occasionally I found some crazy stuff. And then the Pioneer CTF 950 was one of them. And I still do garbage picking today, but I don't do it myself. I got people that work for the garbage company, so I don't have to. But um, anyway, when I was a kid, when I found that, I found the amplifier that went with it, and I didn't know what was wrong with the amplifier, so I just threw it away and kept the cassette player to tinker with. The VU meter worked, everything worked on it, but the belt it was kind of sluggish, and then one of the channels was bad. And then, after playing with it for a while, I disassembled it, and after I disassembled it, I quickly realized, after I took the boards out, I quickly realized I couldn't get the thing to run on a 9-volt battery and make it portable or anything like that, so it all went into the garbage. And I kicked myself in the butt every day over that, because now I realize how much these cassette decks and what they're worth. Back then, I was just a kid, I didn't know. But, um, anyway. Um, basically, I found this board on eBay. I'm like, yay, Pioneer View Meter is going to bring back many of these. I'll just buy the board and make it work. Well, in order to make this display work, you have to have a microcontroller because each one of these is a time division multiplex block. And without the microcontroller, you can't do it with your typical LM3914, 3915 series chips. You just can't do it. Um, and I did not get the microcontroller board with this. I just got the board. So, how do you make it work? Well, I'll show you how. Right here is an AVR at Mega 8 microcontroller running at uh, 8 megahertz internal RC oscillator driving two Allegro Micro or Allegro semiconductor A6810 high voltage shift registers. They no longer make these chips, but I do happen to have new old stock when I bought them back when they still were in production. And then back here is the the uh, LM324 quad op amp. Only two of the op amps are used, and I don't want to put all the overhead on the processor, so this one does the amplification and the DC rectification and the time constant, the peak time, while the, I leave the AVR to figure the rest. It reads the analog digital converter and prints it into a display buffer and all that fun stuff. But, um, and then I made a ribbon cable that goes from, that plugs directly into the breadboard, crimp down connections for the ribbon cable. And the ribbon cable comes around to the display board and then it's holding the display board at an angle and it comes around and it solders right here. The filament I have powered by a 5 volt DC bias. You're not supposed to use DC because of the even brightness across the display. But I compensated for that in software. So that when it scans from here to here, it takes these progressively longer and longer on times so it looks like it's even across the board um, for the most part there's still some dimming but it's a lot better than what it was so this side is actually on shorter than it is on that side um, but but since it's DC there's there's diodes clamper diodes some resistors dropping resistors and all that stuff that are on this board meant for AC current um, I do have a chip right here on that green board which is an LM9022, which is also out of production. And the LM9022 is a filament, AC bias filament driver, but I'm not using it, I'm using DC. Easiest to use. It's powered by that regulator up here. 7805 Classic. And uh, so that's pretty much hardware in a nutshell. And over here, 